Um, could, could I put it to you to quote the, the Labour leader, are you in a race to war? No, this is um, absurdly overblown rhetoric. The question uh, that we're putting to MPs tonight is whether we should extend the airstrikes that we're currently carrying out in Iraq uh, against uh, Daesh, uh, which Parliament voted overwhelmingly in favour of 15 months ago, whether we should extend those airstrikes across a border which Daesh itself doesn't even recognise into Syria so that we can strike uh, at its command and control centre in Raqqa and make our campaign against them more effective so that we can more effectively protect Britain and the British people. Uh, the Foreign Affairs Committee, of course, doesn't agree with you um, on that. Front page of The Independent, if I could quote what they're saying as well, they're saying Britain is on the verge of entering a conflict in Syria in which its political and military strategy is based on wishful thinking and poor information. British airstrikes will be too few to make much difference, but are important because they signal Britain's entry into what may be a long war. What would you say to that? Well, I think it's just plain wrong. Um, Britain's uh, engagement in airstrikes in Syria will make a difference because it's not just about um, total volume. It's about the kind of capability we can deploy. We have a high proportion of the total amount of precision strike available um, in the uh, area. So bringing that precision strike to bear in Syria will make a difference. That's why the United States, why the French have asked us specifically to bring uh, those assets uh, to bear in Syria. So it will uh, make a difference. Uh, and as for engaging in a war, um, as I've already said, this is a fight that we're already in. It's a fight that we can't avoid because uh, Daesh, ISIL are targeting us. The only question for us is whether we take the fight to them to protect Britain and British people and Britain's streets or whether we wait for them to bring the fight to us as they did to the French people in Paris a couple of weeks ago. Foreign Secretary, you make your case very strongly. Do you then agree with the Prime Minister that many of those intending to vote against this tonight are terrorist sympathisers? No, the Prime Minister knows and I know that many people uh, on the other side of this debate will have uh, deeply held uh, personal uh, conscience views uh, against engagement uh, in military action. Uh, and, and we respect uh, those positions, but we think they're wrong in this case. We think uh, the demands of conscience are first and foremost around our duty to protect the British people, to protect Britain, uh, and to ensure that British citizens can go about their business safely and securely wherever they are in the world. And that means wiping out this evil organization that is hell-bent on destroying everything that we believe in and everything that we value. Um, you say that uh, you value and you respect um, people who oppose this as well. The Deputy Labour Leader Tom Watson, though, thinks the Prime Minister should apologise for those terrorist sympathiser remarks. Um, would you like to take this opportunity to apologise then on his behalf? Well, look, I wasn't in the room when the Prime Minister apparently uh, made this comment, but I imagine that he had in his mind uh, uh, some very ill-advised remarks that some very senior uh, Labour politicians um, have made, which are capable of uh, the wrong interpretation. And, and I think it's very important that those who have a position of conscience express it as a personal position of conscience, but recognize, those people should recognize, that the great majority of us believe that our first and foremost duty is the protection of the security of this country and the safety of the British people wherever they are in the world. Well, the British people, um, if you're to believe or trust a poll in the Times today, this poll this morning suggests a shift uh, with the British people in their support over uh, bombing. And the main concern seems to be uh, this whole plan of what happens after we carry out airstrikes. Well, it's, it's complex, I agree. This is a very complex uh, conflict. Uh, but I'm clear that we need three tracks here. We need military action now to degrade uh, ISIL Daesh in Syria uh, so that we can uh, eliminate them in the medium to long term, but also so that we can prevent them launching and planning attacks against us and our allies in the short term. We need a political track to resolve the civil war in Syria. 
which we now have. Uh, what, what's new here is that we didn't have four or five weeks ago is the Vienna process, which is now underway. We'll be having a further meeting uh, in the next couple of weeks to take that forward the next step, where we've got the Russians, the Americans, the Saudis, the Iranians, the Turks, 19 countries sitting around a table, all committed to a transition in Syria. That is a dramatic step forward, and it offers us, the, in the long term, the solution to this problem. That's if you carry it and if you win tonight. And just one wonders um, if the Prime Minister's reported comments have placed the vote uh, in his favour in jeopardy. How do you think it will go tonight? Well, I think uh, the, ma the majority of members of Parliament will be focused on the demands of Britain's national security, on their first duty to ensure that Britain is kept safe. They will have in their minds the fact that Parliament has already voted uh, to engage in this fight. We've already overwhelmingly, uh, by an overwhelming vote in, in the Commons, committed to airstrikes against Daesh in Iraq. We are having positive effect there. We're pushing uh, Daesh back. They've they're, they're, the territory they control has been reduced by about 30 percent from its peak. So it is working. What we're talking about here today is extending the airstrikes across the border into Syria, a border which Daesh itself does not even recognize. It makes military logic. Uh, the moral case is clear. This is the same evil organization that is enslaving people, beheading people, throwing people off high buildings because they disagree with their religious beliefs or their sexuality. The legal case is clear and is now backed by a United Nations uh, resolution. So the issue before Parliament tonight is simply whether we want to take this fight to Daesh in Raqqa uh, and get to them before they get to us, or whether we're going to sit here passively waiting for them to come for us. Talking about evil organisations, do you still see the Assad regime as an evil organisation, or could you envisage any such circumstances where you would ally yourselves with Russia uh, beside President Assad? Uh, no, I can't, because Assad is the principal recruiting sergeant for Daesh. His uh, barbarity towards his own people, the barrel bombing, the chemical weapon attacks, have driven many otherwise moderate uh, Sunni oppositionists in Syria uh, towards uh, ISIL Daesh. Uh, and that's why Assad has to go. Um, by the way, I think we should be careful in characterizing uh, the Russian position. The Russians are very careful in the Vienna process uh, to be clear about their view on Assad. They believe that it is for the Syrian people to decide uh, the future uh, of Assad. They are very careful not to say uh, that they support Assad's uh, remaining in power. It's something for the Syrian people.